Hi guys, I'm Jim and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop and today we're gonna finish this snapper up. We got two cables to put in, the brake cable, the clutch cable, and some wires. We're gonna wire it. Uh, I get a little tired of turning the key on and reaching back around and pushing that little button. So we're gonna hook up a solenoid and you can start it with a key without bending over. Let's get at it. Uh, first, let me move you in a little closer. I guess first, seeing my water is hot, we're going to do the seals. Now these are the seals that go around your differential. This is the side your differential is on. This thing is full of like 80-90 gear lube. It will all leak out the crack around your axle and your bushing if you don't have this seal. Now this is a regular lip seal, just like you use on any shaft. Get it on here. You want to hook one side on and then pull it towards you. And you're kind of stretching the seal to one side. A little tricky to get them on. That will slide all the way up till it goes over the bushing. Now that will actually seal the grease in. Now you want to put a C-clamp around this. My old ones were rusty and I'm going to replace them. Now the other side did not have a seal on it. It had just a hard plastic cover. And what that did, I can turn this a little. That fit on this side. The shaft on this side is three quarters of an inch. And it just pushed on there. Basically all that does is it keeps the sand from getting into this groove or this crack where your axle comes out. Now, bushings are soft. They're brass or bronze or oil-soaked bronze. And you wouldn't think that sand would do that, but when sand gets in there, it embeds itself in the soft material. So then as you keep using it, with that sand embedded into that bushing, it grinds your shaft away. So you're, you're ruining your shaft. So you want to have this on the other side, but what I found out they've done, they discontinued these. They don't make these anymore. They just want you to run that open like this with no seal or protection on your bushing or your, or your axle. Well, they can sell more parts that way. Now, I've tore two of these apart, so I have an extra one that goes on the other side off the other machine. Now, if you can get a good look at this, this stuff reminds me of heat shrink tubing. See the big bell up where your seal is and then it gets smaller? Your seal goes in there. Now, when you ordered this, I thought I was going to get this with the seal in it. No, they send you the seal. Now, this is very hard and stiff. Okay, now how do you get that seal out of there? The seal's bigger than the hole is. There's no way it'll go in. Well, I was playing with it. I found out an easy way to do it. Let me show you. I have a cup of hot water. Now, this is not boiling. It's, it's just warm. We're going to put that in there for a minute or two and let it set. Now, in the meantime, we'll talk about these brake and clutch cables. The brake cable, here's my extra one. It has this big spring on it, which is a lot larger than this little hole that it has to go through. I don't know if I can get you over there or not. Let me see. Okay, you can kind of see the hole right here where that cable's got to come through. So this brake cable has to be fed from the bottom and shoved up. 
Now you don't want to lose your adjusters. So put a piece of masking tape around here to hold these up. Then I used a piece of baling wire with a hook on the end of it to hook onto the cable. Once you get the cable through that hole, let me turn this thing around. Okay, now once you get this up through here, through the hole in the uh, rear deck, you have to go up through this tube that goes to your front forks. So there's a hole up here at the top. And let me see if I can show you that without making you seasick. There's a hole up here at the top where your two cables come out and go to your two pedals. If you have two pedals. Some only have one. So you want to come back down here. I stuck this wire with the hook in the end threw that hole up by the pedals and ran it down and came out the bottom hooked this brake cable on and I pulled it up through hooked it to the pedal then on the inside on the inside you have to hook up to it hooks to your this is the old lift yoke that your chain drive case hooks into. There's a lever that's welded to it and has a hole in it. Your brake cable, find the right end. Goes in the hole sideways, then you pull it up straight and it hooks and it can't come out. The other end hooks on a fork that's on the back of the uh, rear end. There's a fork in there that that hooks onto and I pinched mine shut a little bit so it wouldn't come out. Now before we get too far, this thing has been soaking in this warm water and I'm going to put a new seal in it. I ordered a, another lip seal to fit this three quarter inch shaft on this side so I'd keep the dirt out. Let me move you over a little bit. Now I'm just using a this is a, a tool remover for taking out cotter keys. I'm going to hook that in there and get it between the rubber and the old seal And I'm going to pull that seal out of there, if I can. Popped it right out. Get some of this grease and dirt out of here. It's starting to cool off. I may have to throw it back in the uh, warm water. I think I'm gonna just to soften it back up because it's starting to get hard already. Then on your on your chain case, there's another one of these forks. You can see it on this one. It sticks out. There's one just like this that sticks out the back of your main main case, they call this, I guess. Now this is where your brake cable, a lot of you guys just have this goofy little brake that I took out. Mine has a nice band brake. These are much better brakes. Again, it goes in the hole and you turn it sideways. Then there's a groove on this cable that goes into them forks. And then I pinch these shut a little bit so that doesn't come out. That's how the brake cable goes in. Pretty simple. If you have any problems getting it in, email me. I'll take a closer view of it and send it to you. Get rid of this old cable.
Now your clutch cable goes in the same way. That doesn't have much of a problem. Here's an extra clutch cable I have. Again, your adjusters, tape them up with some masking tape so when you slide them down this tube, they don't fall down the tube on you. That can be a problem. Then just start up at the top where, your, where the cables come out, run them down inside the tube. The clutch cable will come through that small hole just like the brake cable does. And just to let you know I'm human, I made a mistake. Your yoke is where your clutch cable goes, <laughs> not your brake cable. And again, you just put that in through the hole in the side and tip it up. Then your clutch is hooked up. Hook this to your pedal up in the front. And uh, as you're, once you get it running, you can tell if the clutch needs adjusting. Then you just pull some more of these adjusters through. I'll show you how to do that in a second. Let's check on this seal again. This is pretty pliable. Now here's a new seal that I ordered special for this side of the axle. And that should just hopefully slide in there. We might have to warm this up a little more with some more hot water. Yep, it don't want to go in. I'm going to throw this back in the microwave. I'll be right back. All right, we got that in there trying to get warm. We got our seal. I think we're going to have to persuade that a little bit. Maybe hang on to it with a pair of pliers. And there we go. Get it centered. It's amazing how pliable that becomes when you get it in that water. Reminds me of some heat shrink tubing. They must just throw the bush, the uh, seal in there, stick it on the bushing, and heat shrink it. That doesn't look too bad. There again, when you put these on, put one side on, push it down to stretch the seal, and put it up on the bushing. Now you want to stick that on there when this thing is still pliable. So when it sets back up, it'll conform to the shape you want it to be in. Now these will, I should never have a problem with that. Let me get rid of this before I spill it. Now, let me get you back up here. Okay, now that we got the clutch and the brake cable in, we're going to do the wiring. So I'm going to tip this thing down and get it on a box and show you how to put the wires in. Now, uh, speaking of making mistakes, did you notice what I did wrong in video three? When I put this front fork in and put the clamp on it, I had it spun around facing the wrong direction. I had the handlebars facing the bottom. Did anybody notice that? Are you catching these mistakes? All right, let me spin this around and set it down and we'll get to that wire. Okay, here's a helpful hint. Remember we made this board with a two inch hole in it to hold the differential as we are assembling it? You want to make this board about 18 inches long. Then when you get to your, your rear case assembled and you want to put your front fork in, take this board, put it in here, and stick it up under there like that. So when you set your fork in, it'll come down and set on this. And you can put your clamp on without trying to hold it at the same time. Yeah, just a little hint for you that will help out a little. Let's tip this over and I'll show you some wiring. Okay, here's my clutch pedal. I mentioned on adjusting it. 
with these little rings that they put on here. I can do this with my hands not in a way. Let me move you around a little. To adjust these, if you got a book on your rider, it tells you most of this in the book. But a lot of us buy these riders used offline and you don't get a book with them all the time. You just pull this thing up and the cable comes out of the slotted hole. And you just grab however many of these bushings you need and you stuff them through the hole. You can use all up to all four of them if you need to. In fact, I think I'm going to shove all four of them through for right now. So I don't lose them down inside this tube. And you pull it in the slot and that's it. Here's my tape I put on so I wouldn't lose them down the tube when I shoved it up through. That's it for that. Now let's go to some wiring. Okay, we have a hole in the top of this tube. And this is where the clutch and brake cable comes out of. There's a hole in the side. That's where I'm going to run the wires through. And if any of you have an extra one of them caps for your three-quarter inch axle for the right side, the seal that I ordered is a 7661. It's a regular oil lip seal. I got that from Applied Industrial or a Detroit Ball Bearing. You call them and order it. Their name and number and website will be in the description below. If you need any parts, they said they'd be more than happy to ship them to you. Now on the wiring, I'm going to a standard ignition switch. I took the one out that was in here. It was basically just off on. When you turned it off, it shorted out the coil and it killed the engine. We're going to do something a little bit different on this one. Get these wires shoved through. I got a diagram here that corresponds with this switch. And you can figure this out by using an ohm meter and checking them, checking the contacts turning the key in different positions. This one's got five contacts on the bottom. And I got a, I drew up a little diagram. The bottom contact, which stands alone by itself, all that does is when you shut the key off, it goes to ground and it kills your, kills your engine, shorts out your coil. The next two up are the two I'm going to use to start the engine with. I'm not going to have to turn around and push that button anymore. Now you will have to install a starter solenoid. You can get them for about 16, 17 bucks. All the big box stores sell them if they sell parts for lawnmowers and tractors. And the first time I've done this, I didn't want to buy the solenoid. I didn't have the extra money. So I just used this ignition switch. I ran a, a 12 volts up. I ran a big wire back to the starter and it worked great for two or three years. And then I had a fire. <laughs> the switch actually started on fire and I had flames coming out of here. So uh, I would suggest going to the starter solenoid. Now, when you turn this thing to start, I got hot coming in. It jumps across and goes back to the solenoid. When you, when you release the key and it goes back to the on position, it sends the 12 volts up to the top contact on the left hand side, which is going to give my headlight power. And we're going to put a headlight on this. I took most of these parts off my old tractor that's just wore out. It's, it's, it's going to be parts. I'm not even going to try and sell that thing. So let's get some of these wires hooked up on here. And we'll try to get this mounted. I guess first we can throw this headlight on. This is just a standard headlight that 
you get with a tractor. I did put an auxiliary switch on it so I can turn it off during the day when I don't need it. The bracket that I'm using to mount it to the steering tube is just an electrical conduit hanger. You can get it any big box store. Just clamp it around the steering post, put the screw back in, and tighten it up. I like it mounted here instead of on the frame because at night when I'm doing my leaves and when I'm steering, the headlight shines in the direction that I'm going. That's kind of nice. I like that. That's how I mounted that. Now, excuse me, I need my blueprint here. The headlight will plug into this prong. I have a blue wire going back that's going to kill the engine. No, nope, I'm sorry, it's the red wire with the white tape around it because I have two red wires at one point. I think I got rid of one now. That's going to go down on the bottom to kill the engine. Got to grab another coupler for this. Okay, now we got to get, let's see, we got the kill wire hooked up. We want to run the hot wire from the battery up to the starter or up to the switch. That's the black wire. That plugs in here. Now these switches, you can they're all going to be different depending on which one you buy. So you're going to have to check it with a uh, ohm meter with a continuity set setting and see which goes where. Now the black wire with the white tape on it goes on the other side. That will send power back to the starting solenoid. The blue wire is just a ground. I, I don't like using the frame for a ground because if you remember this tube is going through two plastic bushings which are going to insulate it for the ground. Then you just stick this up in that hole and put the nut on. We'll stick these extra wires down in there and poke them up under here. This wire will hook to the ground and the ground is going to hook, I'll probably drill a hole in here, sand the paint off and hook them both to the frame. That way I know I got a good ground coming up from the battery to run the light. Better put that in there before I lose it. Now let's go to the back and we'll show you how to hook that up. Okay, you can see the starter solenoid down in here. So, I need right now the black wire with the white tape on the end to hook on to this lug up here that kicks that solenoid in and out. Basically, all that solenoid is is an electrical switch. Now, that's got to go through this grommet on the cover that covers this thing. If I can get it to poke through there. And it doesn't want to go through. We're going to have to pop that grommet back in place now. It's plenty long. 
So we're going to cut this off about here. And we'll strip it back a little. We have a spade connector we can put on there. And that plugs on right there. Now this wire is already hooked up. It's the one that was on the bottom of that push button switch I got rid of. That's probably a number eight or maybe even a 10 going back. I'm using number 12 for what I'm doing. That's plenty big to go back to the solenoid. From the battery to the solenoid, you're gonna want probably at least a number 10. That should be plenty big. I mean, I suppose you could use an eight if you really wanted to, but I don't think that's necessary. We're going to run this wire through. This is a number, this is a number 10. We're going to strip the end of this one back. And this gets an eyelet connector on. That goes on, get this cover out of your way. That goes on the other side of the solenoid. And put the nut on. That has to go over to the where the battery is going to be. So you can cut that off about, well, I don't know, a couple feet long. It'll be plenty for now. And we'll put another eyelet on because most of these batteries, you connect everything with a quarter 20 bolt through the post. This will go over to the battery. Now, if you want to get technical, this should be a red wire. Yes, I know. I didn't have any red wire. So what we'll use is a piece of red electrical tape. Now the black wire is going to be the hot wire going up there. The blue is going to be a ground. We're going to hook that up on the ground side. This red wire with the white on it is going to be the kill switch for the cylinder for the uh, engine. So we're just going to leave this back here until we get the engine done and mounted. Now let's go on the other side. Okay, I hooked up, I threw a battery in here. It's not, I think it's shot. I haven't used it in a couple of years. It's just been sitting here. But it'll help you get an idea how to hook this up. Now this wire is the original wire that went to the engine off this tractor. This, this big one is probably, I'm guessing probably a 10 or a number 8, goes to the starter. It's got an island on it. The small one that I cut off, there's a wire coming out right by the starter, and that comes from the magneto that's inside the engine that charges your battery. So that little wire will hook up to your hot side of your battery. That charges your battery when your engine's running. Now, this is the hot wire that's going right to the solenoid that's hooked to the positive side of the battery. 
Here's a couple ground wires already. Put a little bit longer screw in here. Now one ground wire goes to the screw that's holding the solenoid in. I don't trust all this rusty frame and and uh, the tube going up front to try and carry a good ground. So I always add a ground wire, no matter what I'm wiring. Now this next black wire is the hot wire that goes up to the ignition switch that comes back to the solenoid. That one we're going to cut. And put on one of these eyelets. Seems like a lot of wires, but uh, I guess I just like to turn the key and start the thing without reaching around and pushing that button. And it's really not all that confusing. If you have a problem, email me and I'll email you a wiring diagram on how I did all this. I am going kind of fast to try to keep these videos short. Sometimes that ain't always good either. Now the blue wire is a ground. So you can either hook this directly to the battery like I'm going to. Or I have a ground wire down here hooked to the frame. Which, I don't know, I just guess I put that on in case I need it. So we'll make this about, the, about that long. We'll cut this one off. This is a bunch of extra wire I got from work when I tore a machine apart and pulled all the wire out of the conduit. I just coiled it up and threw it on the shelf. I figured I'd use it someday for something and kind of came in handy for this. So now this is a ground. We'll stick that on here. Now when I get this done, I'll probably group these together and wrap them with some black tape so that it's kind of like all one bundle. And it might not look quite so complex. The red wire is our kill wire for the engine. I won't have to hook that up until we get the engine in here. So basically, this thing is done until I get the engine going. I hope I helped you guys out a little with this build. I'm sorry I went so fast, but uh, like I said, I'm trying to keep these things short. We're already 33 minutes. If you need any help, if you need a couple of hints, uh, you need a wiring diagram, send me an email. I'll copy one off and send it to you. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to rebuild, tear this engine apart, and check that out. I bought an ultrasonic cleaner to clean the carburetor and some of the other parts in. You're going to want to see that happen. So until next time, send me an email if you need help. It's jimsfixitshop at gmail.com. Be more than happy to help you. I'll put the address and number in for Detroit Ball Bearing, or it used to be. It's Applied Industrial now. For that seal, if you need one of those, and I guess that's about it. So we're, we're done with this. Next will be the series on rebuilding the engine. So if you need anything, drop me a line. Subscribe to my channel. You're going to want to watch this. And uh, I guess work safe and have fun. We'll talk to you again. Bye.